if you create knit stitches, which is what you do with the long tail cast on, and work ribbing above that, what you get is an edge that is different on both sides. So here I worked that long tail cast on and then I launched into my ribbing and you see the edge here. And if I flip it over, it's different on this side you can actually create purl stitches with your long tail cast on so that the edge is exactly the same on both sides. Goes like this. The first stitch is as we've been doing. There's your knit stitch, because we're knitting that first loop. And here's how you create a purl stitch. You do the opposite. It's the old Ginger Rogers joke, right? Backwards and in high heels. So I go around the outside of the far one. Instead of around the outside of the thumb, I go around the outside of the finger, feels a little cumbersome at first, and then wrap the yarn as if to purl, right? Think about how you wrap the yarn for purling. It goes over the top of the needle and away from you, okay? That creates a purl stitch, and you can see, here's my knit. There's a smooth stitch at the edge there, and beside it is a purl. So again, to create the purl, you go over the far side, swoop over and catch the far side of the finger strand, and then you're gonna catch the near thumb strand and wrap it as if to purl. Purl. I do a couple more purl wise. It is actually possible if you find it easier, you can wrap the other way for your purl stitches. What that means is they're seated the wrong way on the needle, so you just correct that on the first row coming back, or the first round, because this of course works great for in the round. But swoop over the far side of the finger strand. So just context here. For the knit, we were coming over the far side of the thumb strand. For the purl, you come over the far side of the finger strand, so it's just the reverse. So the purl is just a back of a knit, right? And then you grab this and wrap it as if to purl. So you can do any ribbing pattern. You can do knit to purl to ribbing, whatever you want, and set up your stitches. This also, turns out, is the basis of a two-color cast on. I've made a slip knot with both of my colors here. That will actually get dumped off. That doesn't count as a stitch. And I, to create an orange stitch, I do the knit wise. Hey, look, it's an orange stitch. And to create a blue stitch, I do the purl wise. As with so many things in knitting, there's a lack of clarity on what this is called. I've seen this referred to as the Italian two-color cast on. I've also seen other names for this, the combination long tail. Really, it's all about the method here. So you've got two colors, you go knit-wise to get a stitch in the color on your finger, and you go purl-wise to get the other color. And you've got a two color cast on. The two colors are combined in the base, but it creates a really attractive braid. And in fact, that braid I've seen, um, Nancy Bush has said that that's actually an Estonian method as well. So all I know is it makes a really nice edge. My slip knot here will just get dumped off. That's not a real stitch. Your first stitch starts there. And in a swatch, it looks immensely tidy. It looks like that. Again, it's a braided edge of the two colors, and I've just worked corrugated ribbing on top here because it is ultimately a ribbed cast on, but there we go, two colors. In summary then, I recommend starting with a slip knot because it's more stable. It also creates a cleaner edge. If you start just by draping the yarn over the needle, that first stitch is a little bit uneven and too small. Just Space the stitches out, use your finger to hold them down if you want. And remember, around the outside, around the outside, and through. 
And once you get good at it, super fast. And be over generous with your tail, an inch per stitch for all but the bulkiest of yarns, and you will never run out. This is my favorite all-rounder. I use it for 90% of my projects, and I think you should too. Two buffalo gal go around the outside, round the outside, round the outside.